The graph relates to the motion of a falling body. Which is the correct description of the graph? Well, if y is speed and the air resistance is not negligible, eventually you're going to reach terminal velocity. And that is what's happening here. You're still going to reach terminal velocity. So the answer is D. Which graph represents the motion of a car that is traveling along a straight road with uniformly increasing speed? Well, a key word here is uniformly. That means it's, uh, it's changing at a constant amount. And for it to be changing in a constant amount, you need a constant acceleration, which is exactly what's happening in A. A body initially at rest explodes into two masses, M1 and M2, that move apart with speeds V1 and V2, respectively. So let's just imagine we've got two uh, bodies. This is going to be M1. This will be M2. Okay, this will be V1. This will be uh, V2. Now, the system was initially at rest, so therefore, by conservation of momentum, the total momentum of the system is zero. So we can see M1 V1 plus uh, M2 brackets. And I'm going to say minus V2 because it's going in the opposite direction. So we can rearrange this and we get M1 V1 is equal to M2. Whoops. M2. I'll try and make that a two. V2. Now let's rearrange uh, uh, this equation. So let's put V1 over V2 is going to equal M2 over M1, which is V. A motorist travelling at 10 metres per second can bring a car to rest in a distance of 10 metres. If you've been travelling at 30 metres per second, what distance could he bring his car to rest using the same braking force? So we want to find out the deceleration. So S, U, V, A and T. Now we're told S is 10. Uh, U, the, final, uh, the initial velocity is also 10. The final velocity is zero and we want to find out what A is. So we can say V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So we've got zero is equal to 10 squared, which is 100, plus 2 times by A times by 10. So let's rearrange this and we get minus 10 divided by 20 equals A. So 20, 10 divided by, sorry, 100 divided by 20 is 5. It's a minus, so we're going to get minus 5. So there's our deceleration. So that's an S. Okay. And now we know the deceleration. If you'd been traveling with 30 meters per second, what distance would it take to bring down, to slow down the car to rest? So again, let's apply Suvat's S, U, V, A, and T. This time we want to know the distance. The initial velocity is 30 meters per second. Final velocity is zero. The acceleration is minus five meters per second squared. So let's work out what S is. So uh, again, V squared equals U squared plus two AS. So we've got zero is equal to 30 squared, uh, which is 900, uh, plus two, times minus five times by uh, S. So minus 900, whoops. So minus 900 divided by, well, two times minus five is minus 10 equals S. So we've got uh, S is going to equal 90 meters, which is D. Two railway trucks of mass m and 3m move towards each other in opposite directions with a speed of 2v and v, respectively. These trucks collide and they stick together. 
So here's our first track, here's our second track. So this is mass m and it's going in this direction with a velocity of 2v. This is mass 3m and it's moving with a velocity of v. Now be careful though because this is in the opposite direction so that's a minus. What's the total momentum of this system? Well we've got m 2v minus 3mv okay and that's going to equal the total mass after is going to be 4m and we're going to call this vf for the final velocity so m2v minus 3mv we get minus mv equals 4mv final velocity so minus 4 sorry minus mv divided by 4m m's cancel and we end up with uh, 1 quarter v equals vf it's a minus but remember here at the same speed so which answers that well it's a two blocks x and y of mass m so this is m and 3m uh, respectively are accelerated along a smooth horizontal surface by a force applied to the block X as shown. What's the magnitude of the force exerted by X on block Y during this acceleration? Well, we're going to use F equals MA. Okay, well what's our mass? Well it's M plus 3M, which is 4M. So this, this, this is the general formula. Applied to this situation, we've got F equals 4MA. What's the acceleration? Well, F is going to be over 4M is going to equal A. So what is the force on here? Well, again, apply F equals, whoops, equals MA here. But we want to know the force X on Y. So the mass of Y is 3, and the acceleration is here. So F x, y is going to equal to well, f over 4m multiplied by the mass which is 3m uh, whoops, the masses are going to cancel and we find that it's 3 quarters of f which is d a ball of mass 2 kilograms traveling at 8 meters per second strikes a ball of 4 kilograms traveling at 2 meters per second. Both balls are moving, along, are moving along the same straight line as shown. After the collision, both balls are moving with the same velocity. What's the magnitude of this velocity? So what we're going to do, we're going to look at the momentum to begin with. So m1 u1 plus m2 u2 that's going to equal to, well, the total mass is going to be m1 plus m2 because the, uh, it says after the collision they move at the same velocity. Okay, so let's have a look at the momentum to begin with. So we've got 8 times by 2 plus uh, 4 times by 2. Okay, and that's going to be equal to the mass of both of them which is 2 plus 4 which is 6 V so 8 times by 2 uh, is 16 plus 2 times 4 which is 8 uh, we get a total momentum of 24 kilogram meters per second that's equal to 6 V 24 divided by 6 is equal to V which is equal to Four meters per second, which is answer A. Which feature of a graph allows acceleration to be determined? Well, the answer is D. It's the slope of a velocity time graph. A car is traveling with uniform acceleration along a straight road. The road has marker posts every 100 meters. When the car passes one post, it has a speed of 10 meters per second, when it passes the next one, it's got a speed of 20 meters per second. So what's its acceleration? Well, we're gonna apply SUVAT, S-U-V-A-T. The distance between each post is 100 meters. 
The initial velocity is 10 meters per second. The final velocity is 20 meters per second. And we want to know what's the acceleration. So we can use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And let's put the numbers in. So we've got 20 squared is equal to 10 squared plus 2a times 100. Now 20 squared uh, is equal to 400. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to minus 100. Uh, that's from the uh, 10 squared is equal to uh, 200 a. So now we've got 300, divide both sides by 200 and we get a our acceleration which is going to be, oops, uh, 3 over 2 uh, meters per second squared. So 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 which is b. A motorcyclist stunt rider moves horizontally uh, takes off from a point 1.25 meters above the ground. He lands 10 meters away, as shown. What was his the speed of his takeoff? Well, what we need to do is we need to find what's the time it took to drop this level. His initial velocity in this direction, though, is zero meters per second. So, suvat s u v a n t. Now we're looking for time. Distance is 1.25, the initial velocity is zero, final velocity we don't know, the acceleration is by gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And we want to know what was the time. So what we can use is S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Well, U was zero, so the first term is zero. S was 1.25, and we've got plus a half times 9.81 times by t squared. So we need to rearrange this, and then we're going to get t squared. So 1.25 divided by a half times by uh, 9.81. Root the whole thing. This is going to give us the time it takes to drop down, which is equal to... 0.5 seconds. So what's the speed? Well now we know how long it takes to drop down so we want to now find what's the speed in this direction. We know the distance and we now know the time so speed is equal to distance divided by time which is equal to 10 meters divided by 0.5 which is going to equal 20 which is d. The diagram shows two pulses on the screen of a cathode ray oscilloscope. The grid of one centimeter squares covers the screen. The time base is set to one microsecond per centimeter. How long does each pulse last? Well, if you look, this is the time of each pulse. So if each square is worth one, we've got one times by two, which is two, which is two microseconds. A boy throws a ball vertically upwards and it rises to a maximum height where it's momentarily at rest and then it falls back down to his hands. Which, is the following which of the following gives the acceleration of the ball at various stages in its motion, taking vertically upwards to be positive? Neglect air resistance. Now at each point in this journey, no matter where you are, gravity is always acting downwards. So therefore, it's always got an acceleration. Or, well, in this case, a deceleration. The answer is B. The diagram shows a velocity time graph for a car. What's the distance traveled between time equals zero and time equals four seconds? Well, what we need to do is work out the area underneath here. And we can use the Papesian rule, so we've got a half A plus B multiplied by the height. Well, in this case, this is our height. Uh, this is going to be 
A, this is going to be B, or in terms of the SUVA equations, we're doing a half U plus V times by time. They are equivalent, they're the same equation. So a half brackets times by 2 plus uh, 12 multiplied by the time, which is 4. So 2 plus 12 is 14 times by a half times by 4, we get 28 meters, which is D. What gives the value of a body's acceleration? Well, it's the gradient of its velocity time graph. A cyclist is riding at a steady speed on a level road. According to Newton's third law of motion, what is equal and opposite to the backwards push of the back wheel on the road? Well, it's going to be the, the forward push of the road on the back wheel. An object accelerates in a direction that is always perpendicular to its motion. What is the effect, if any, of the acceleration on the object's speed and direction? Well, the speed at which an object is going to orbit is going to remain constant, but the direction is going to change. So therefore the answer is C. A stone is dropped from the top of a tower of 40 meters. The stone falls from rest uh, and the air resistance is negligible. What's the time taken for the stone to fall the last 10 meters to the ground? Now a way you can do this, you can work out well, what's the time it takes to drop 30 meters, what's the time to drop 40 meters, and then work out what the difference is. So we're going to apply a SUVAT, so that's going to be S, U, V, A and T. So to begin with, let's work out the time it would take to drop 30 meters. The initial velocity is zero. The final velocity we don't know. The acceleration is 9.81 meters per second. Okay, and we're going to try and find the time. So we're going to use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Rearrange this formula to find out uh, uh, what T is. This, because it started at rest, is equal to zero. So rearranging, we get 2S divided by A, all rooted, equals T. So when S was 30, we get 2 times by 30 divided by 9.81 all square rooted. That's going to be the time it takes to go to 30. Okay, and that time is equal to okay, 2.47 seconds. But we need to find the time it takes to drop 40 meters. Uh, so that's going to be uh, 2 times by 40 divided by 9.81 all square rooted, which is equal to uh, 2.85. So the difference is 2.85 minus 2.47, which is equal to uh, 0 0.38 seconds. So hopefully we've got something that's similar. Yes, we do. A, brilliant. Which is a statement of the principle of conservation of momentum? Well, the answer is D. Momentum is conserved, providing no external forces act. An object falls 10 meters from rest before entering some water, assuming uh, that air resistance is negligible. What is the time taken for it to reach the water and the speed at which it reaches the water? Well, let's use some SUVATs. S U V a t. We know the distance is 10 meters, the initial velocity is zero, the final velocity, that's one thing we're trying to find out. We're taking down to be positive, so gravity is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared, and time we also don't know. So firstly, to find out velocity, the final velocity, v squared equals u squared plus 2as, 
this term equals zero. So we can just do velocity is going to equal the root of 2 times 9.81 times by 10, which is going to give us uh, 14 meters per second. Okay, so this is 14 meters per second. And finally, the time, well, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And again, this term equals zero because our initial velocity was zero. So rearranging this for T, we get 2S over A, root the whole thing, and that's going to give us T. Now let's put some numbers in. I'm moving out, I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to do it over here. So 2 times by S, which is 10, divided by 9.81, root the whole thing. This is going to give us our time. So we've got 20 divided by 9.81, square rooted, we get a time that is uh, 1.43 seconds. So 1.4 three seconds. So 1.43 seconds, well, it could be C or D, but we know our final velocity is 14, so the answer is D. A constant mass undergoes a uniform acceleration. Which of the following is a correct statement about the resultant force acting on the mass? Okay, so it's uniform. That means it's constant, and the mass is also constant. So by F equals M a, the force must be constant but not zero. A force F is applied to a freely moving object. At one instance of time, the object has a velocity of V and acceleration A. Which quantity must have the same direction? Well, F equals MA. So the force and the acceleration, if I've got a force on an object here, the acceleration is also in the same direction, but the object could have been traveling this way with a velocity and be slowing down. So only A and F must be in the same direction. V, it doesn't matter. It could be going in the other direction, but we'll know it's uh, got a force in the opposite direction because it will start to slow down.